Something that you no doubt have seen going around if you pay attention to any sort of radical politics in any way, even if you're like loosely interested in leftist politics in America right now, there has been a recurring sentiment that has been circling on social media, uh, through the news and beyond. And that is the idea, ironically, of not talking to journalists. And I wanna talk about that a little bit um, because a lot of people have this impression like, oh, well, you know, journalists are always uh, good. And, you know, journalists are on your side. They're trying to shine the truth on things. Uh, but that is most certainly not true. And unless you know exactly who you're talking to and exactly what they're all about, you put yourself in danger by volunteering information to a journalist. And that is especially true. That is especially true when it comes to issues where there is pre-existing journalistic hostility. Now, in a, the previous section on the live stream, if you're watching the live stream, if you're watching live, you'll have to go check out my section talking about the pro-Palestine protests all over the U.S. We talked about exactly that, how a whole bunch of grifting, right-wing, uh, scuttling bug, bug monsters uh, crawl up out of YouTube and Infowars and all of this nonsense to try and uh, get gotchas um, on students all the time. People like Steven Crowder and Caitlin Bennett and all these people, they, they show up and they act like they're journalists. They have their little press badges and their cameras and they tried to get everybody to talk and these students wouldn't talk to them. They stonewalled, they, politely, mind you. They said, sorry, we don't want to talk to you. But they all agreed, we're not going to talk to journalists. And they did that because they know that the media environment right now is a propaganda machine. It is a machine for manufacturing consent. Now, if you're not familiar with the term manufacturing consent, the term manufacturing consent refers to a process by which mass media, television, etc., is used to essentially create for you your consent. You know, so think about it like this. The government, uh, uh, there's, there's a, a protest movement that is inconvenient for the government. The government wants to crack down. So they, you know, maybe they give out some information. Sometimes it's direct, sometimes it's indirect. Maybe it's people who are friendly to the powers that be, some government agencies that benefit a lot from the current president. And they show up and they decide, hey, why don't we make these guys out here protesting, why don't we make them look like they're dangerous and scary? Then everybody will be fine if we crack down on them. That's the process of manufacturing consent. It is creating the, the uh, a, 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 a emotional environment, a propagandistic tool by which your consent is taken from you by basically telling you, well, of course you, of course you need us to crack down. D look at what they're going to do to you. Can't you see these dangerous, uh, these dangerous protesters? And this is where not talking to journalists, not talking to the media comes in. And there's another circumstance, um, uh, in which not talking to the media should be, uh, uh, engaged in. And that is around the topic of DIY HRT. We're gonna talk about this full story in just a second. But for those who don't know, DIY HRT uh, is a acronym that refers to do-it-yourself hormone replacement therapy. For many, many trans people globally, uh, the governments that they uh, were born under and are oppressed by do not allow them fair, free, and medically necessary access to the medicine that they need to live their lives fully, truthfully, and healthfully, okay? This is incredibly common. Unfortunately, it is even becoming common all over the US. Uh, we had a brief window where it seemed like there was some progress being made, and a couple of states are uh, pretty solid when it comes to HRT access uh, through uh, standard medical means, but many, many states are having uh, let's just call it severe, uh, tyrannical 
turns when it comes towards trans people. There is a derangement afoot uh, about trans people that has largely been spurred on by right-wing propagandists who have a religious motivation, a moral motivation. Uh, that They believe that it is immoral to be trans. And they are trying to put that into law, to force it on everyone else, whether you agree with them or not. And, uh, yes, exactly. Uh, uh, people in chat are bringing up Planned Parenthood. And uh, if a journalist is asking you about Planned Parenthood, if a journalist is asking you about being trans and going to Planned Parenthood, don't talk to them. Don't say anything. Don't do anything at all. Just say, sorry, I'm not interested in talking to you about that. Um, there are all kinds of ways to have your voice heard on trans issues. For example, uh, I go to a, I, I, my doctor is a, uh, a public clinic that is incredible, that has liberatory roots, okay? It was, it was founded by a political org and became a public clinic over time. They are explicitly in their charter devoted to uh, anti-discriminatory policies. If they send me a survey, that, that an anonymized survey that asks me to talk about my experience going there as a trans person, I'm gonna do it because I can trust this organization and I know what their goal is. When it comes to media, you gotta be very careful. You gotta be very careful when it comes to, to journalists. Recently, the Guardian, a UK journal that has a very, very spotty history on its coverage of trans issues, recently started um, asking for interviewees about DIY HRT. And I want to read about this. This is a message that was circled around social media among trans people. Important, I have been reliably informed that Guardian journalists are snooping around asking for trans people to talk to them about DIY HRT. They are particularly looking for under 18s doing DIY. Shouldn't need to be said, but do not engage. Spread widely, do not engage. We need this notice spread out via every grassroots support group and social circle in the country. Urgent, if they get even one to take part, it can become a national conversation. Top alert. Don't talk to the journos, share this widely. And of course, the reason for this is because uh, journalists with an agenda are becoming very interested in DIY HRT. And they have all kinds of things to say about it. Now I'm gonna say my part about DIY HRT. DIY HRT unequivocally, unquestionably saves lives. No questions asked. The science is on my side, okay? We know that DIY, we know that HRT is medically necessary for trans people. We know it has been scientifically proven that HRT reduces suicide rates, reduces rates of mental health issues, uh, and increases the likelihood of thriving and survival among trans people. When a government a tyrannical government of one form or another, regardless of what they call themselves, decides to put undue restrictions um, on HRT or to outright ban it, this kills trans people. Therefore, DIY HRT saves trans lives. DIY HRT is largely, there are entire networks uh, of understanding, documentation, and safety that go in uh, to ensuring that DIY HRT um, uh, can be accessed safely and knowledgeably, okay? These things exist, and you can find them if you want to, okay? And if you need to, and you should, okay? That's my part about it. There are a bunch of people out there ranging from concern trolls to outright uh, uh, enemies of the trans community who wish for trans people to disappear. Um, there are all kinds out there who spread in misinformation about DIY HRT that can be easily disproven with factual information so long as you take the time to look into it. And right now, journalists are participating in a push against DIY HRT. And the reason for that is because the UK government is cracking down on trans people right now. The UK government already has a notorious history um, I should also state, sorry, before I go on, so are red states in the United States. It is not quite as severe in most places of the United States as what is going on in the UK. 
Um, however, in some states in the United States, it is absolutely just as severe. Um, uh, there are a number of red states that have been drastically attacking trans people's access to HRT. With that said, because of this, um, journalists who are in line with the powers that be um, are trying to figure out how trans people get access to their medicine. If it's, uh, you know, through not through the official corridors. Now, I want to point something out for those who might be a little concerned here. In, in the UK, the official corridors for getting HRT can sometimes mean years of wait time. Years of wait time for a scientifically proven medically necessary medicine. That is a, that is a, a, that is asking to kill people. That is a killing list. That is a choking people out until they die. You are putting people at risk, making them wait years of suffering, putting them knowingly at risk of suicide, suffering, death, and violence. Okay? So just in case you have any concerns, that is what's going on. And journalists are trying to figure out where people get their HRT. So they can elevate that up to people who want to make it harder for trans people to live their lives fully. But there's good news. Which is the Guardian's piece on DIY HRT could not find a single person to talk to. They could not find a single individual to interview about doing DIY HRT. Largely because people had the sense to not talk to these bad faith journalists. And we want to keep that up, okay? We don't want life-saving tools to be destroyed. We don't want more dead and harmed trans people. We want more living, well trans people. And that means we have to get serious about some of this stuff. That means we have to be aware that there are people out there who do not have our best interests at heart. And the good news is a lot of people know that already. I wanted to take some time today to highlight this and to reiterate my positions on HRT, DIY HRT, and talking to the media, okay? It's incredibly important that we protect those of us who are taking risks in order to make sure that people can live even if they happen to have been born under an oppressive regime. The world in its current state is not hostile to people like myself, to like many of you out there. It's not fair, it's disgusting, it's unjust, but we have to be smart. We have to use our power to preserve this stuff. We have to protect ourselves and look out for one another. And a lot of these journalists especially people at The Guardian, are not on our side. They might present with a smile. They might act like they're just asking questions. But those questions can get people hurt. We do not want uh, uh, the, 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 the full brunt of the conservative uh, troglodyte media sphere bearing down on the desperately necessary and limited resources that people need to survive. The trans community is a minority. We are a, a, a super minority, okay? We are a very small group of people. There's more of us than most people think, but still, there's not many of us. And uh, there is a cultural derangement towards trans people that is being fueled, like I said, by right-wingers. We have to recognize this and fight back against it. So the lesson of today is don't talk to the media, okay? Don't do it. Don't trust them. They're not on your team, especially in an environment like this. Anyway, thanks for hearing me out. Good news is a lot of people have already learned this lesson, but you should learn it too and take it to heart. Watch out for each other. Help each other out. Give each other resources, but don't give it to your enemies. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed down below.